Hey guys, Chaz back with another video. In this video, I'm just gonna show you what I've been picking up. Just tell you, you know, basically the reasoning why I'm picking certain things up. Uh, my method behind picking some of these things up. Um, I, I feel like doing a video too about what I've been selling and showing you guys. I've, I've sold a lot of the, not a lot, I sold around a good 20 cards of the um, PSA order, the guys who I don't really believe in and I can move for a big profit. I'm just moving it and then um, just holding on to the stuff that's actually, I think is gonna go up whenever the seasons roll around. So again, I would sell some of that stuff if I needed the capital. I'm gonna move off some of that stuff that I've already profited on to move it into other things that I think I could double. And that's one thing that people um, make that mistake is like, let's say I had a Daniel Jones that cost, let's say this card costs 200, right? It's selling for 200. This is just hypothetical. It's a graded card, PSA 10 is a silver, selling for 200. Um, I can sell it now or wait till the basketball season. It might go up to like three, 300. Maybe it'll go up to like 300, right? So you're like, yeah, I can make an extra $100 if I hold on to this for six months. Or I can sell this and get into something I can three, two or three X, like the stuff that you get graded and stuff like that. So even if this card eventually sells for 300, I can take that 200 reinvest it and turn that three 200 to 600 rather than wait till this to get to 300 so oftentimes and again it's less work you can just sit on this card you don't really have to do much and it'll just go up in value yes but again if i need the capital to move on to other things i think i can you know three four five x i'm just gonna sell the stuff that i already got profit on and move on move it on to something else so i'm gonna get us some pickups Rui, i think i got this for real cheap a couple of dollars like five six bucks or something like that maybe even less i don't remember Quindary, I think of this is a dollar. It wasn't a lot with some other cards. So I just, you know, whenever I see like, you know, variables, but again, this guy ever has a decent game or two, this card will jump up to like eight, 10 bucks. Again, a dollar, a dollar to eight dollars doesn't sound like much, but you do this all, you know, over and over and over and over again, you'll eventually turn a hundred to 800 and stuff like that. So again, it's all about the ROI, the percentage you're getting back. Picked up this Kyler, I think for like 52 or something like that. These were pushing like 70, 80 bucks. I think the Raws, I think even her, higher than that. So great um, card to pick up for 50 something bucks. Again, this is a potential I'll re review it. Maybe send it to Star Stocks. If not, maybe to Comp C or something like that. Now we're going to get to the slab. Didn't pick up much ungraded, which if you guys know all I used to, I used to never pick up graded. And pretty much now you see it's mostly great again the grading psa is pretty much shut down right for right now so focusing more on the greatest stuff stuff you could easily move again when you sell stuff like this people might not like the condition this that and a third when you sell this you're basically selling the slab the guy's buying the, the slab he's not buying the car so a lot easier to move um didn't pick up much football thing i picked up like three drew lock his stuff has taken a little uptick since he's been working out peyton manning you um i've sold some of my bigger drew lock stuff like recently like two of my bigger cards again i already doubled my money on it and it's kind of risky because the broncos could draft a quarterback so i'm willing to roll into like cheaper stuff like this you know you know this is like a like their 14 card again if he they don't draft a quarterback i think his stuff will take a jump so again his stuff will take a big jump. I will, I'm, I'm just going to put that out there. Um, if he, they don't draft the quarterback, there's a big chance they will draft the quarterback. So I'm still picking up some of his stuff, like 40 bucks for this, a PSA 10. If they don't draft the quarterback, this will shoot up to like a hundred something dollar card. I think some of the stuff has already shot up since I bought this. Most of this I bought like last week before the Peyton Manning news broke and all that stuff. Uh, there was more talk about them drafting a quarterback. So his stuff was really, you know, depressed. But I was able to sell... Uh, two of his select cards one number to 175 one number to 99 again the 99 i picked it up for 60 something dollars sold it for 190 uh the 175 i picked it up for like 80 something i sold it for 180 so moved off some of that stuff took that you know 200 dollars profits and i'm rolling into other stuff uh this is my other football card the last football card i picked up again 130 for uh bgs 9.5 this is serial number to 75 it is wild that you can pick up select number stuff does not get respect. This number to 75 sells for the same, around the same as a silver. Sells for the same as a, a base prism. Base prism, I think the last one sold for like 100 uh, in a BGS 9.5. And this one, a number to 75, picked it up for 130. That's wild to me. I'll do that all day. Number stuff, a, sub, a lot of the number stuff you can get for real cheap. You'll be surprised. How did you select? Uh, you want to look at some of the select stuff, man. Is I think is really underpriced. The numbered stuff, number to seventy five. 
no brainer to me if the the nine fives of uh, prism is going for a hundred i'll pay extra 30 bucks for a serial number to 75 card all day i mean that's a no-brainer pick up in my opinion um now we're gonna get to some basketball some of the random guys again these are like cheap slabs again cost 30 dollars to grade like 15 20 bucks for you know a psa 10 of a player again next season i think this card easily double go to seiku again a guy who's got hobby love they're just waiting for him to have a couple good games his prices will spike and that's all i'm doing i'm picking up seiku whenever he has that you know good game a stretch or two and his stuff starts moving i just move it so i mean 50 bucks for a number to 199 of a guy who has that you know hobby love i'm telling you his stuff was like when i was picking up like during when the covid shutdown or whatever his stuff was way more expensive than darius garland's and right now his stuff is going for like one four for darius garland so I'm, again i'm gonna pick it up because i know that his stuff was going because of hype he has a lot of hype behind him and that that could tell me because he wasn't like producing big numbers like when he first came out early on in his rookie season like he put up some big numbers and his stuff really spiked and then it just went down and his hype really died down but again, people still have a lot of expectations for him in the hobby. They're just waiting for him to have that big moment. His stuff is going to explode. Not explode, but it'll go up like 4 or 5x. Like Because his stuff is so cheap right now that his stuff will go up a lot if he does have those couple good games. Or just, especially if it's like at the beginning of the season, he has like a couple 20-point games. Look for his stuff to explode. Um, got some Rui. He's been playing well. I think I picked this up for $27. Red, white, and blue matches their color, color scheme. Easy uh the olympics are in tokyo i'm not sure if he's gonna be on the japanese team not sure but if he is i'm sure he'll get a lot of love in the hobby when that happens and again psa 10 the psa 10 prism I'm, i got this for less than a psa 10 prism you know most of the guys their their premieres are out selling their prisms so whenever i could get a pr premiere for less than the the prism is going for and i already know his prices are down all, all across the board so i'm getting him, him on the dip and i'm also getting this um you know this card that's undervalued as compared to like the prism base um i've been picking up a bit, little bit of darius garland recently most of these are darius garland i think the, the rest of this is darius garland and trade um i can't even tell, um i already trey young oh my god um um it's a little late my mind isn't working too well this is a uh, prism uh this is a variation i this card looks great probably overpaid a little bit they probably like 40 something dollars for this card and the fact that i paid more for this one than the variation of the prism i think was a little bit of a mistake i think the i picked up the, the prism variation for like 30 something dollars i paid this one for like 41 i still think this will go up a value a lot before this next season so prism variation like disco you want to call it you got the silver psa 10 but I, I, if you notice, I am picking up a lot of nines, and you're gonna see a lot of these are nines, and I'll, I'll go over that a little bit later. Um, PSA ten, the silver mosaic. I'll get into some of the select. We got select again. I picked these up around thirty something dollars between thirty and like thirty six, thirty seven dollars of these silvers. PSA nine, another silver PSA nine. This is the premier silver PSA nine. Looks very well centered, and again those are things you want to look at um is the centering like people like uh, you could probably sell it for a little bit more than a regular nine because you see these nines right here you could tell the centering is off this one's really well centered and that's what people really want is the eye appeal of the card centering sometimes is like the major thing that people look for i think like surface issues and stuff like that that's why when you get like bgs cards when the centering is the nine and everything else is nine five that card is worth a lot less then if it's a nine, if it's a min gem on something else, because the centering is like, to me, the most important, um, you know, object of, you know, I appeal of the card. Now we get into some of the prisms, the prism base again, like 20, $21 for these. It's the variation disco. And again, this is the same as that, uh, mosaic one. Um, but this is prism. And I think this one should be worth more. And I actually paid less than I did for the mosaic on this one. We got some silver PSA nines. Like $67 I'm picking these up for. 67, 65 to 70 bucks. Pick these two up for. Again, I think these will go up a lot before the season. PSA 10 green. I think I paid like 70 something dollars for this card. Easy pickup for me. Uh greens are actually shorter print than you would think. They're actually really low numbered. Um, like if these sell for about the same like these. Uh like uh, the base. 
The base prism and this one usually sell for around the same price, and these are probably like one tenth of the population. So again, these are either shiny, way lower pop, and they sell for around the same as the base. I would go for like these in the red, white, and blues. They're severely undervalued because they're wear, way shorter prints, and they actually have that you know prism effect, even though they have color variation that people might not like as much. But again, they're lower pop and they're shiny, so I I don't understand why the bases you know are compared like hold pretty much the same value as these um and this is probably the biggest pickup i had i think it was like 90 something dollars is the green ice i actually bought one of these but it had like a scratch or something i didn't want to get great and i sold it most of the stuff i was buying at that point when i first started i was just buying and selling right away basically the sasha t thing before i was even watching sasha t i was doing it but i was just doing it on ungraded cards i would buy stuff Win them at auction for less than market value. If I didn't like how it looked, I would just resell it for market value, make money off of it, and move on to the next thing. And I picked these up. I picked up like three or four of the purple ones that are number. The purple ones are numbered. The purple ices are numbered to 149. But most of the purple ones had a scratch like going all the way down. It's not a scratch, it had a print line going all the way down. Like they wouldn't grade one. I think there's not that like the purple ice are really rare to get a 10 on the pop report. I'm pretty sure for Darius Garden. I think most of them are nines. Um and I bought like three or four of them and they were all, you know, they all had issues and I would just sell them. You know, I picked them up for 50, I sell them for 70, make 10 bucks, move on to the next thing. Just keep, you know, rinse and recycling your money. Pick this up for 97 bucks. This was, this is one of the shorter print um, ices. This one only came in the um, Fanatics box, I believe, the Fanatics one. Uh, I love the green one, the green ice. All the ices are pretty short print, like the pink ice. They're really the pink ices are really off center. That's why they they don't they're not appearing in the pop report as much. The rest of these are Trey Youngs. We got a PSA nine shock, another PSA nine shock, another PSA nine shock. I've got these all from the same seller. Then these, I believe, I got from the same seller. Boom. We got the select concourse PSA nine, and then we got the Mojo PSA nine reason why i picked up a lot of psa 9s again is a lower entry point and if you see most of the cards for the most part if you compare like let's say trey young's optic choice psa 10 psa 9 over the long run psa 9s when they blow up actually have greater ry usually you actually make more money by buying psa 9s the reason for that is for the most part is because the 10 is way less obtainable for most people so i mean look at the shot this car looks amazing the tent and i actually paid less for this like 60 dollars less than the hollow and this is way shorter like there's way less in the pop report than this in the hollow i think these are great buys if you can find them there there's only like 100 graded in general i think there's like 29 eights like 40 something or 59s and then like like 20 tens or no i think like 15 tens so it's not that many tens only like 15 there's like 59s and then there's like 38. So this is a, you know, it's a hard card to grade. There's a lot of eights in the report, hardly no tens. So again, and that's what happens often is that when a card is really short print and it doesn't appear much. So the tens, there's only 15 of them. So they don't sell that often. So people get scared. They don't know what to market value the card. So they're scared to over like keep paying when there's a card that had, you know, since the nines, there's more of them. They sell more frequently and people, okay, this one sold for a hundred. I'll pay 120. I'll pay 160. The next guy pays 180. Like whenever something's going up, it's easier to keep track of where it's going. And also is a lower entry point. So like people be like, I can't afford the 10. I'm not touching that. That's too much money, but I can buy the nine. There's more people that can afford the nines than the tens. So that's why ROI wise, these do a little bit better. So let's say that one went up, the 10 went up 50%. This one will probably go up 60 or 70% because this is a lower entry point and more people could get into this car. So that's why oftentimes picking up nines is actually a better investment, especially if they're good cars like this. Now picking up nines of like base of really low end guys, I don't know, maybe the tens are better, but like when they're established players and they're like nines that go for like 200, 300 bucks. Again, once this is going for like 600, the other one's probably going for like, you know, 1800 and some, a lot of people can't touch that price. So it's very, these will go up a lot more easily and a lot easier to move because there's more people who are willing to pay the price of a nine than there is to pay the price of a 10, which could be three or four times what this is going for. But again, ROI wise, I think that um, I'm moving the thing all around. Uh, ROI wise, nines tend to do better when a guy blows up than tens. And again, lower entry points is easier to move because nines, more people have the money for the nines. Again, this card is beautiful. 
<clears throat> so if you see the choices for this year and you can get it for less than the hollows of certain players that you're targeting, I think that's a great buy because, again, these are way shorter print than the hollows. I think they look amazing. And to me, they're buys if they're selling for less than the, the, the hollows. If you're buying a guy who's dipped down, don't look at the hollows. Try to check these out. These are a little bit shorter prints, so it might be hard to find. But if you could get your hands on one of these, I, I think this is a better buy than the hollow. And I actually have both. I have the hollow and I have this one. But pay less for this one, and I'm more excited about this card. I think it has more potential than the hollow. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys are interested um, in seeing what I've been selling recently, let me know. I'll go through like my thought process. Just like I'll go through my thought process of what I'm picking up and why I'm picking up my thought. And you guys, you know, if you guys, you know, have different things you're picking up right now, different strategies you're using. Um, just let me know down below in the comments. Pretty much it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, please make sure to leave a like down below. If you're new to the channel, please make sure to subscribe. Till next time, guys.